You're probably wondering where I am. <laughs> I will tell you, but I'm gonna backtrack a little bit and we're gonna go to another spot and then I'll tell you more about this place. Today I'm gonna tell you about the Silurian Age rocks of the Shuangug Formation. Hello. It's very bright. Today we are in the Shuangunks in upstate New York. I guess some people would call it downstate New York. But anyway, these rocks are Silurian age, which is after the Ordovician. They were formed after the Taconic Orogeny. So right after the Taconic Orogeny, there were huge, huge mountains um, over there to the east. And there are still the Taconic Mountains today, but they're much, much smaller. So when they were younger, before they eroded away, they were really large mountains. And off of these mountains, there were rivers. They were coming off of those mountains really steep and fast. And the waters brought lots of sediments off of those mountains to the west. They weathered and eroded off of those mountains. They were carried in those streams. They were transported in those streams and they were deposited eventually over here in the west. And they were deposited as quartz, just a bunch of quartz. And that's what makes them that really bright white color that stands out from a lot of the other areas here. The reason that they form really big dramatic cliffs like like you see here is because quartz is um, really strong and really resistant to weathering and erosion and it is 7 out of 10 on the Mohs hardness scale where diamond is a 10. When rocks are made out of quartz it takes a lot for them to weather and erode away compared to the softer rocks in this area like the shale and the limestones that are in the valley and over here to the west you can't really see where I'm pointing but to the west of here there was actually a shallow inland sea. This area around here to the west was actually a coastline. It was like a coastal environment. Yeah, the continents were a lot different in their location. The climate was a lot warmer than it is now. One of the other reasons that quartz is the only mineral in these rocks is because these streams, when they eroded off the mountains, there may have been other sediments there, but the other sediments probably weathered away, partly because of this warm and humid and wet environment that really caused a lot of the weathering forces like the types of weathering to be re really active, like physical weathering, especially chemical weathering. So basically the only thing that was left, the strongest thing, was quartz. Since once all the, that organic matter and the other sediments like clays and silts were weathered away because of that climate and other factors, the sediments were deposited in layers, in many, many layers. So these sand grains and these pebbles, they were compacted together really tightly to form a rock. And they were also cemented together. So this is called lithification. The Shuanggunk Formation is known as the Shuanggunk Sandstone and the Conglomerate. Parts of here are sandstone, meaning that it's pretty uniform in size of grain size. So it's mostly sand, like fine to medium to coarse grain sand. Whereas in other parts, it is a conglomerate because there is sand and then there's pebbles, which makes it not as uniform as a sandstone. Another really cool thing about this area, obviously all of New York is pretty heavily glaciated, but this lake is awesome because it was formed from the glacier, the Laurentide Ice Sheet. About 20,000 years ago was the last glacial maximum during the last ice age. And this was the point where the Laurentide Ice Sheet that covered a lot of North America at the time was at its most southern extent. And after this, it actually kind of turned around and began melting to go back north. So as the ice sheet was melting, there's a lot of water coming off of it and a lot of this melt water went into this basin that was now created from the carving action of the glacier. Well, actually the carving action of the sediments and the rocks at the bottom of the glacier. So all this water was falling into this new basin and eventually the glacier left and there was no other sources of water going into here. Yeah, the main source of water in this lake is just basically precipitation and surface water runoff. There are also a lot of other really interesting things about these rocks. Since they're sedimentary rocks, they show a lot of features like cross bedding and other channel features. This is why we know that they were braided streams because of geologists looking at these rocks and looking at these features. So yeah, when you walk around at this park and many other places in 
the Shuangan because you'll see things like striation, glacial striations, which are basically just lines carved into the rock and they're usually all going in parallel directions. And this is really cool because it shows you which direction the glacier, the ice sheet was moving as it dragged sediment into that rock and carved away pieces of that rock. There's also chatter marks and some other interesting glacial features like glacial polish. Another spot I went to right here in this area is the waterfall. So this waterfall is a little bit more downstream, of, downstream, down slope of here. I had to drive up a little farther and walk up to these cliffs on very icy pathways. <laughs> Oh my god, this entire thing is ice. This is going to take me forever. Yeah, it's pretty. So this waterfall is also a glacial feature. I'm pretty sure the way it was formed was by glacial plucking. Glacial plucking is when the ice is moving over rocks and essentially these rocks already have natural fractures in them called joints and these joints are areas of weakness in the rock. So as the glacier moves over it, as the ice moves over it and grinds on it with that sediment and all those rocks and the rock breaks off at the parts where it's already weakest at the joints. As these rocks break off, it forms a ledge and essentially all this meltwater was coming off of the glacier at the same time and the stream formed and now this stream goes off of that ledge as a waterfall and into a plunge pool and then further down the stream. When you hike down to it, it's in a gorge, very similar to the gorge I was in when I was talking about that waterfall in Taconic State Park in my other video. In the Shuanggunks in general, you can also see a lot of interesting erosional features. There's a lot of huge blocks of rock that are at the bottom of a lot of these cliffs here. Um, here at Minnewaska, you can see a lot of these chunks at the bottom right at the shore of the lake. And I think some of this might be from the glacier, from that glacial plucking action like I talked about. But I think some of it is also from physical weathering and chemical weathering that kind of broke off chunks of rock at those weaker surfaces like I was talking about in those joints and broke off those chunks of rock. So that's another really cool thing here you'll see. Okay, I promise I keep forgetting that I have one more thing to talk about, but the last thing is the Catskill Mountains. You can see great views of the Catskill Mountains from basically everywhere in the Shuanggunks. The Catskill Mountains are younger, a lot younger than these rocks. They formed right after the Acadian orogeny. The Acadian orogeny was after the Silurian. It was like 350 million years ago. And another mini continent collided with ancient North America. And when that mini continent collided, it formed more mountains. And that whole process kind of happened again where all this sediment was eroding off of those huge mountains and they were eroding westward and they formed another delta. So essentially this delta was eroded over time by glaciers and rivers and that's why we see the Catskill Mountains today but really it's just an eroded plateau. So I think that's pretty much all I wanted to say here. I know that's a lot of information but the Shuanggangs are really really fascinating so thanks for watching.